Welcome to the fascinating world of measures of central tendency. These three fundamental measures, mean, median, and mode, are like detective tools that help us uncover the secrets hidden in our data. Think of them as different lenses through which we can examine the heart of any dataset. Whether you are analyzing student test scores, understanding salary distributions, or studying customer preferences, these measures will be your trusted companions in making sense of numbers and telling compelling data stories. Imagine you are trying to understand a group of people's heights, or test scores, or incomes. Central tendency is like finding the gravitational scent of your data, the point around which most of your data naturally clusters. Just like a balance scale finds its equilibrium, central tendency measures help us find the equilibrium of our data set. Let's visualize this with test scores. 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 12. Where do you think the center of this data lies? Is it influenced more by the cluster of scores around 5? Or pulled toward that outlier score of 12? We have three powerful ways to find the center of our data. And each tells us something unique. The mean is like a mathematical balance point. It considers every single data point making it precise but also sensitive to extreme values. Think of it as the center of gravity of your numbers. The median is like the middle ground. It divides your data into two equal halves, making it incredibly resistant to outliers. It's the diplomatic scent that isn't swayed by extremes. The mode is the people's choice. It tells us what value appears most often making it perfect for understanding popularity, preferences, or the most common occurrence in your data. Let's dive deep into the mean, often called the arithmetic average. The mean is represented mathematically as x bar and calculated using this fundamental formula. We sum every single value in our data set that's the sigma notation you see, then divide by n. The total count. This simple yet powerful formula has profound implications for how the mean behaves with different types of data. The mean is like a democratic vote where every data point gets an equal say in determining the center. Let's work through our first example step by step. We have quiz scores from 11 students. Step 1. We add all the values together. 2 plus 3 plus 4. And so on. Giving us a sum of 61. Step 2. We count our values. We have 11 students. Step 3. We divide our sum by the count. 61 divided by 11 equals 5.55. Notice how this mean of 5.55 is pulled upward by that outlier score of 12. Even though most students scored between 2 and 8. Here's a powerful demonstration of the mean sensitivity to outliers. Our original dataset has a mean of 6.0 in ice. Representative center. But watch what happens when we add just one extreme outlier of 50. The mean jumps to 10.4, an increase of 4.4 points. This single outlier has dramatically shifted our measure of center, even though 9 out of 10 values remain clustered between 4 and 8. This is why understanding your data's distribution is crucial before choosing the mean. The mean has several important mathematical properties that make it both powerful and sometimes problematic. It uses every single data point, making it mathematically comprehensive but sensitive to outliers. It minimizes the sum of squared deviations, which is why it's fundamental to calculating variance and standard deviation. 
The mean works best with symmetric, bell-shaped distributions where outliers are rare. It's the most commonly used measure in scientific research and business analytics because of its mathematical properties and ease of further calculations. The median represents a fundamentally different approach to finding the center. Instead of using mathematical averaging, the median is purely positional. It's the value that sits exactly in the middle when we arrange our data from smallest to largest. Think of the median as the diplomatic center. It doesn't get swayed by extreme voices but represents the true middle ground. This positional nature makes it incredibly robust against outliers. Let's master median calculation with two scenarios. First, when we have an odd number of values, like these seven data points, we use the formula position equals n plus 1 divided by 2. That gives us position 4. So our median is 9 the fourth value in our ordered sequence. Notice how we've highlighted the middle position. This value has exactly three values below it and three values above it. Perfectly dividing our data in half. For even numbers of values, like these six data points, we don't have a single middle value. Instead, we take the average of the two middle values, the third and fourth positions. 6 plus 8 divided by 2 equals 7. Notice something interesting. Our median of 7 doesn't even exist in our original dataset. This is perfectly normal and shows how the median can represent a theoretical middle point between actual data values. Here's where the median's true power shines. Using the same dataset where the mean was dramatically affected by outliers. Watch what happens to the median. Our original median is 6. Even when we add an extreme outlier of 1000, the median remains 6 completely unchanged. This happens because the median only cares about position in the ordered list. Not the actual values of the extremes. The outlier could be 100, 1000, or even a million, and the median would stay the same. This robustness makes the median invaluable for real-world data analysis. The median's advantages make it incredibly valuable for real-world analysis. It's completely unaffected by outliers. Always represents the true 50th percentile. And always exists uniquely for any dataset. Most importantly, it often better represents what's typical in skewed data like income or house prices. Even non-statisticians intuitively understand the concept of a middle value, making it excellent for public communication and business presentations. The mode takes a completely different approach to finding the center. It's all about popularity. The mode is simply the value that appears most frequently in your dataset. Think of it as the popular vote of your data. While mean and median focus on mathematical or positional centers, the mode tells us what's actually most common or popular in our real-world data. This makes it incredibly valuable for understanding preferences, behaviors, and patterns. The mode is unique because datasets can have different modal characteristics. Unimodal data has one clear winner, in this case. The value 3 appears 4 times, making it our single mode. Bimodal data has two equally popular values, here. Both 1 and 5 appear 3 times each. This might indicate two distinct groups or preferences in your population. Sometimes there's no mode at all, when all values appear with equal frequency. Indicating no clear favorite or a uniform distribution of responses. Here's where the mode becomes incredibly practical. Imagine you're analyzing t-shirt orders. Two extra small. 
5 small, 12 medium, 8 large, and 3 extra large. You can't calculate the average of t-shirt sizes. What would that even mean? But the mode is crystal clear. Medium is most popular, appearing 12 times. This directly informs business decisions, stock more medium sizes. The mode answers the crucial question. What should we focus on most? The mode's applications extend far beyond t-shirts. Retailers use it for inventory decisions. Educators identify common student mistakes to address in teaching. Healthcare professionals track the most frequent symptoms. Marketers find preferred features to emphasize. And quality control teams focus on the most common defects. In survey research, the mode reveals the most popular opinions or preferences among respondents. Let's compare our three measures for the same dataset. The mean is 5.55. Representing the mathematical center, the median is 5, showing the middle position. The mode is also 5, indicating the most common score. Notice how the outlier of 12 only affected the mean, while the median and mode remain stable. This demonstrates why understanding all three measures gives us a complete picture of our data's center. When should you use each measure? Use the mean for symmetric data without outliers. Especially when mathematical precision matters and you are planning further calculations. Use the median when dealing with skewed data or outliers. As it provides a more robust center and is better for public communication. Use the mode for categorical data or when you need the most typical or popular value. It's perfect for business decisions and inventory management. In real applications, income data typically uses median because high earners skew the mean. Test scores often use mean since they're normally distributed. Retailers use mode for inventory decisions. Real estate reports median prices to avoid outlier effects. Customer satisfaction might use all three measures to provide comprehensive insights. Medical professionals use mode to identify the most common symptoms in quality control. The mean helps detect subtle process shifts. Survey researchers use mode to reveal the most popular opinions among respondents. Remember. Each measure of central tendency reveals different aspects of your data. The distribution of your data should guide your choice. Using multiple measures often provides the most complete picture. Context and purpose should always drive your decision. Always visualize your data first to understand its structure. No single measure is universally best. Each has its place and purpose. Most importantly, Understanding why you choose a particular measure is far more valuable than simply knowing how to calculate it. This understanding is fundamental to effective data analysis and statistical thinking. To summarize our comprehensive journey, the mean provides mathematical precision. Perfect for symmetric data and further calculations. The median offers a robust center. Ideal for skewed data and resistant to outliers. The mode reveals the popular choice. Essential for categorical data and business decisions. Each tells us something valuable about our data's central tendency. Master these concepts. And you'll unlock the power of statistical analysis. Master these fundamental concepts of central tendency. And you'll be well on your way to unlocking the full power of statistical analysis. Thank you for joining this comprehensive exploration. Subscribe for more educational adventures in the world of data science and statistics.